Hello, and welcome to the first year of WWE's ECW, the show where we take a look back at the first 52 episodes of WWE's re-envisioning of Extreme Championship Wrestling. For episode 23 of ECW, we're in my home country of England, and the city of Manchester is housing the November 14th show. Joey Styles tells us that this past week, Taz underwent knee surgery, so filling in for him tonight is brand newcomer, Elijah Burke. Burke's been on the brand for five minutes, and he's already been demoted to commentary. Elijah says that as far as he's concerned, the E in ECW now stands for Elijah Burke Productions. Viewer watching this, you might be cool, but you'll never be Big Show in those shades cool. To kick off the show, ECW world champion Big Show and Paul Heyman make their way down to the ring. Paul Heyman says this evening, we have the classic case of good news, bad news. The bad news is, due to the events last week here on ECW, Rob Van Dam will not be here tonight in the UK. The good news is I have the honour and privilege of presenting you the most dominant champion in ECW history, The Big Show. Now moving on to the Extreme Elimination Chamber match at December to this member. You already know five of the six participants in the chamber, and the question remains, who will be the sixth man? Will it be someone from Monday Night Raw? Could it be someone from Friday Night Smackdown? Might it even be someone from ECW? It is time to find out who will sign this contract and be the sixth man in the Elimination Chamber match. Hardcore Holly's music then hits as he makes his way through the backstage area to Gorilla. Before he can get there, SmackDown's Bobby Lashley attacks Holly. Paul Heyman is gobsmacked and the Big Show is fuming. Big Show steps out of the ring to confront Lashley and receives a spear from Bobby. Bobby then signs the contract in the ring, making himself the sixth competitor in the Extreme Elimination Chamber match. Backstage, Heyman's goon squad are furious. Big Show says, it makes no sense to me. All you had to do was put Bob Holly in that position. Holly and Test ask Heyman why he even put the open contract out there. Heyman says he wanted to maintain the illusion that this was legitimate. Big Show says, we don't have to make it look legitimate. We run this place. Heyman says he doesn't know how Lashley can think he can pull this off. He's not even on the show. I'm going to lawyer up. Seeing as Bobby Lashley is here tonight, here's what we're going to do. Let's make Bobby Lashley part of ECW. Let's put him in the main event because I'm envisioning a match. Bobby Lashley versus the man that he ripped off and took out of the Extreme Elimination Chamber match, Hardcore Holly. The squad likes the idea. Big Show says it's time to get some payback. CM Punk makes his way down to the ring next to take on Mike Knox for the second week in a row. Last time out, Punk beat Knox and secured his position in the chamber match at December to this member. First question I have is, does the lighting guy know how to control the house lights? Why is this match so dark? Thought for a minute, The Undertaker was about to make his second appearance on ECW. Knox hasn't sent Kelly away this week. She watches on from the outside. In case you couldn't tell, Kelly's pretty fit. Or what's that other thing us English people would call her, Joey? The hot toddy, as they say here in the UK, Kelly Kelly. I particularly enjoyed Elijah's analysis of the situation between Punk, Knox and Kelly. But she is already with a man, so why is she looking at another man? Is she a tart? Is she a slapper? Take your pick. Knox elbows his way out of the anaconda vice and rolls to the outside. Punk tries a baseball slide, but Knox avoids it and hits him with a big right hand. Kelly is trying to check if Punk is okay. Knox then gets angry with her. Punk hits Knox with a kick to the gut and Kelly gets taken out in the process. Punk then goes to check on her. This gives Knox time to capitalise on this distraction. Since this distraction, Knox has remained in firm control of the match. For the portion of the match that Knox controls, Kelly appears to be wincing every time a move connects with her favourite wrestler CM Punk. Knox goes for a suplex, but Punk hits him with a knee mid-air and starts to mount a comeback. Punk hits Knox with a kick off the ropes to take him to the outside. Punk then hits an incredible suicide dive. He went through those ropes like a bullet. Punk sends Knox back into the ring and then hits a flying clothesline. He only gets a two count and Kelly appears to be disappointed that he didn't get free. You know what's next. Slaps and a kick, followed by the Anaconda Vice for the win. Kelly is overjoyed that her favourite has won the match. Our school teacher Matt Stryker is backstage ready to give us a lecture. He says that one of his favourite aspects of history are the statements that endure the test of time, something we in the know refer to as quotes. 
The quote that is pertinent to this lesson is those whom ignore history are doomed to repeat it. Anyone who has witnessed an Elimination Chamber match knows full well that the great men have emerged as mere shells of themselves. So to the six superstars that enter this violent, extreme Elimination Chamber, I implore you to heed this lesson. A video package then plays out, highlighting the brutality of the Elimination Chamber match. CM Punk is being interviewed by Rebecca backstage. He says, I want to say to Bobby Lashley, welcome to ECW. On December 3rd, I'm going to be like a kid in a candy store because I love competition and I get to compete against five of the top athletes in the world. Bobby Lashley, Sabu, RVD, Test and the ECW world champion, The Big Show. To me, the best thing about this chamber is once we're all locked inside, it's every man for himself. Davari and the great Carly make their way down to the ring next. Tonight, Davari is taking on another ECW original, the innovator of violence, Tommy Dreamer. Whilst Dreamer is staring down the great Carly, Davari heads outside the ring and sneak attacks Dreamer. Even with this cheap shot to start the match, Dreamer quickly turns things around and hits a fall away slam on his opponent. Davari later pokes Dreamer in the eye and works on the injured knee. Davari goes for a splash, but Dreamer avoids it. Tommy then starts to mount a comeback. Dreamer is sizing Davari up for a Dreamer DDT when the great Carly pulls Tommy's nutbag into the ring post. The referee calls for a DQ. Carly then hits a chokeslam on Dreamer. Surprise, surprise. All I'm going to say on this is at least Davari didn't beat Dreamer. Beating Shannon Moore? Fine. Beating Guido? Okay. But beating ECW legend Tommy Dreamer? I think I'm going to draw the line right there. Main event time. Heyman, Big Show, Test and the security team are already at ringside ready for the Battle of the Bobs. Bobby Lashley and Bob Holly. Lashley almost doesn't make it to the ring as he nearly gets blown up by his own pyro. After returning from the commercial break, Lashley is absolutely battering Holly. He even shows off for the Manchester crowd holding Holly in a suplex position for a while. Holly manages to turn things around when he plants Bobby head first into the ring post and then the steps. Holly now proceeds to lay the smack down on Lashley for a bit. Holly goes up to the top rope and on the way down his face connects with Bobby's boot. Lashley goes on to dominate Holly for a bit. Bobby now goes to the top rope. Holly hits the ropes and Lashley lands testicle first on the turnbuckle. Holly then hits a superplex on Lashley. He goes for the cover but only gets a two. Holly goes to the top rope. He gets caught by Bobby and then T-boned across the ring. Lashley hits a running power slam, goes for the cover, then the Big Show pulls the referee out of the ring. Test and Heyman's security team now beat down Lashley. But have no fear friends as CM Punk and Sabu come down to the ring to help out Bobby. And last but certainly not least, Rob Van Dam joins them. Once the ring is cleared, RVD and Lashley have a bit of a taunt off. This was a really enjoyable episode of ECW. I particularly enjoyed Joey Styles and Elijah Burke's English references throughout the show. The Chamber match is shaping up nicely for December to Dismember. I'm fully aware that December to Dismember is up there with some of the worst pay-per-views of all time, but right now I'm failing to see how they could fuck this Chamber match up that bad. You've got six great wrestlers that should put on a good bow. Of course, the pay-per-view will be covered on the channel later on. In a weird way, I'm really looking forward to watching this dumpster fire of a pay-per-view. I've never seen it, so you'll be getting a completely genuine reaction from me. And from what I've read, it's going to be a major turning point in the WWE version of ECW. I'm going to give episode 23 of ECW a solid 3 out of 5 stars. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.